Welcome back everybody to another video from scriptingisfun.com. In this video we're going to apply a fix to uh, our, our uh, main player's melee attack function. Uh, the way that I showed in the video is trying to keep it simple uh, and easy to use, but in, in implementing it across several projects there has been a bit of a problem. So I'm going to show you how to fix that so that you can uh, get the accurate results you want from your melee attacks. So if we go into the script where we're doing melee attacks, this is in the player's movement script that we were working in. If we melee attack, what we're doing here is we are doing the physics 2D overlap circle all. And what that's doing is it's getting all the colliders that uh, are within the melee range of this melee point position. So uh, that's returning them all and storing them in an array of Collider 2Ds that we've called hit objects. What we did is we checked to see if the length of that was greater than 1. So we got at least one object, and if so, uh, what we were doing is we were sending to the second object in the list take damage, because we were assuming that the Collider of our player would be the first Collider that was hit in this overlap circle, because this is sorted uh, overlap circle all gives us the array and it sorts it by distance from the point that we start the circle at right here. So uh, we were making an assumption there and in some uh, projects that assumption wasn't holding true. So a better way to do this, slightly more complicated but better, is after we get our, our array of hit objects is instead of just trying to send it to this one right here assuming that that's the one that we want to hit what we really want to do is to loop through this entire array and either damage everything in range that's not the player so we could do an area and effect like that or we could actually search for what we're looking for something tagged as an enemy or as a, a damageable object or however you want to do it so I'm going to modify this code here to show you how that works we don't need to ask here um, if hit objects are uh, greater than than one or not. What we can do is actually just um, uh, insert a line right here. What we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of our objects. We're going to need a for loop. So we're going to do for. Now there's a little shortcut for making a for loop. If you type in the word for and then you tap your tab key twice, it'll drop in the basic shell of your for loop. If you hit tab again to highlight the max there, then we can tell it uh, what our max length for the, uh, for the loop is. And that's going to be hit objects dot length. So basically we're going to loop through uh, our hit objects. And of course once that's in there, if you hit enter again, it will complete that. And it's kind of a, a shortcut for typing in a for loop. So you don't have to type the int i0 and all that. So we're going to start at the first position. We're going to loop as long as we're not past the length of our array. So we'll go all the way through our array, however many objects we hit looking at each in order. Then what we're going to do is we're going to copy this line right here and paste it in right here. So and this time if we want to do area of effect you would just say I in here and then as this loops through it will send the take damage to every object that it hits and any object that is damageable that has this take damage function in it will take that damage. All right, if, uh, and so now that I've done that, I'm going to get rid of this if statement here. I don't need that. All right, so we don't want the player to take damage. So what we need to do is have some way of checking to see if the object at this I position in the uh, array is the player or not before we send the message. So we're going to do an if statement here. Now, there's several different things we could check for. We could check for a tag. We could, we could check to see if the collider matches the collider on our player several things to do. We do have the player tagged. If I go out here in the Unity, I'm on my skeleton player. We do have him tagged with the player tag. So let's just compare tags here and see if it's not that. So we would say if um, if uh, we would say if hit objects at i dot compare tag and then what we really want to do uh, well, let's just do it this way. Uh, player, that's the name of the tag right there. And we don't want it to do it if it is the player. We want it to check if it's not. So if that is um, not, if that's not equal, remember exclamation point equal signs, 
true, okay? So if that's not equal to true, then we would do the damage, okay? The other way we could write this is if we, we could just uh, do another shortcut here, we could just put the exclamation point in front of here because hit objects and pair tag player is going to return a true or a false uh, based on if the tag matched. So if I put the exclamation point in front, this says, hey, if, if this comes back as false, then do it. So if it's the player, it'll come back as true, not true as false, which will fail the if test. Uh, but if it comes back as this isn't the player tag that we found, then that'd be false, and not false is true, which will make this if statement true, which will make it run this. So you can write that uh, a couple of different ways. I'm going to do it the shortcut way here. So now I'm checking every, when I loop through this, I'm checking the tag on each of these objects to see if it's the player. If it's not the player, then we'll send damage, and that way you won't damage uh, yourself. All right, so that's a way to do area of effect. That'll damage everything within range. If you want to check for a particular type of object, or if you just want it to hit the first object it finds, what you could do um, is you could add a break here. So you could say, hey, okay, the first time I find something, so let's do open and close curly brackets uh, for this if statement. So we can do a couple of commands here. So if it's not the player we take damage, uh, then we could um, just tell it to break. Break will cause this loop to stop running. So basically it will loop through until it finds the first object that's not the player. It'll send the message to damage it. It'll break out of the loop and it won't damage anything else. So that would be if you wanted to damage the closest enemy to you, if there's more than one. If you want to damage all of them, make it area of an effect, then you wouldn't use the break. If you wanted to damage a certain particular enemy or have a priority list, then you would just have to do more checks to see, okay, was did we hit this thing or that thing? And, and there's all sorts of stuff you can do. I don't want to get too complicated here. But the main way to fix this again, instead of just assuming that the first uh, item or the second position in our, in, our, um, in our hit objects list is the actual thing that we want to hit, we'll just go ahead and loop through and check just to make sure. And this is a much better way, an accurate way to do it. I was just trying to save you having to write a loop here, um, but that ended up not being the best solution. So again, you know, we, we try things out, we test it, uh, we play test in several different uh, ways, and you find what doesn't work and what gets buggy or where your, your glitches are, and you go back and you, you just do a better way. Okay, so that's what we did here. Um, so that will fix this, uh, this way of doing melee damage. Uh, using the physics uh, overlap circle all, just add a loop to it and we're good to go. All right, hope you found that helpful and that that uh, fixes uh, any problems that you might have been having with that system. Again, please keep leaving those comments, ask those questions. I look at those and I'll go back in and make some of these short little uh, fix it uh, videos based off of those as they come up. Hope you found this useful. Enjoy your day.